love that piano player. <laughs> Let's do 140. Surely goodness and 
woke us up for a word for him. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Hey, it's good to good to see everybody this morning. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. I tell you, it's just uh, it's just good to be here. I tell you, we was gone to the Jubilee this week, and we truly had a great time. Uh, we uh, uh, was able to uh, uh, hear some good singing, some good preaching, and I'm gonna tell you right now, it was just good. I uh, wanted to uh, let you guys know a little bit uh, about something that's coming up uh, here in the 1st of November. I had told you that I would uh, uh, let you know. Uh, we are planning on going to uh, the Ark and the Creation Museum. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to pull it up. I always say the date the wrong date, but it's, uh, it's the first weekend in November. Uh, Mark, you ain't going to find the maps uh, November the 5th, that's right, we're going to leave on Sunday, November the 5th, uh, we'll be driving up um, just right above, just right outside of Knoxville, and we'll spend the night the first night, and then we're going up the next day to uh, Cincinnati, uh, and uh, we'll be at the Creation Museum on Monday afternoon, uh, and then on uh, uh, Tuesday morning, we'll go to the Ark. And we'll spend the day at the Ark, and then we'll be coming back to uh, 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 Gatlinburg, or actually to uh, Sevierville in Pigeon Forge area, uh, and we'll be there for a couple of days on the way home, and then we'll make our way back. Uh, I have I have searched and searched and searched, and the best I can do on the price for that, two to a room, four hundred and twenty-five dollars per person. Uh, is the cost for that trip uh, but if you're interested in going let me know where I can get your name on it's $425 two to a, a room that is for the motel stay and the price of admission into the creation museum and into the ark which I felt like was a pretty good price you know uh, so uh, if you're interested in going to that uh, I'd love for you to be there also I'd like for you to remember that we have got the senior adult uh, uh, Revival that's going to be at Shady Grove this month. It's going to be on the 18th. We'd love for you to be there and be part of that. I need to get folks to sign up for that. If you go out to the Welcome Center, there is a, uh, a sign-up sheet out there. I need to know how many is coming. So if you are interested in going to that, it's going to be good. Our church is also going to be the ones doing the cooking for that. And so uh, uh, we look forward to a, a day of that uh, fellowship up there. So, a couple things uh, else going on. I remember, uh, on the 15th will be our uh, annual meeting uh, on Sunday evening of the 15th. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Remember, our backpacks uh, getting ready for Appalachia. Hey, if, uh, if you hadn't got your backpack yet, we still got some backpacks back there uh, uh, for you. Uh, we need to get those filled up. We actually still have a list of, of things that goes in those backpacks where we can minister to the children in Appalachia uh, during Christmas time. That's okay. <laughs> list is the same. Dates just, just messed up. All right, without further ado, guys, I thought we was done with John, but we ain't done with John. Take your Bible and go back to John chapter number 21. We're going to wind John up this morning. Uh, God has uh, showed me something here in this passage uh, as we was finishing up, and I think it's important for us all to glean everything that the Lord has for us as we go through here. John chapter number 21, verse number 18. If you have your Bible, stand in honor and reverence of the reading of the word of the Lord. Even if you don't have it, stand in honor and reverence of the reading of the word of the Lord. Uh, but here's what it says. It says uh, in John chapter 21, verse 18, it says, Verily, verily, and remember, anytime you see those two words together, you see, verily, verily, that means look here, pay attention. You need to, you need to focus on this. See, verily, verily, I say unto you, and he's, he's talking to Peter, he said, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest where thou wouldest. 
But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall uh, gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, uh, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? And Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that disciples should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die. But if I t will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifies of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself, could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Brother Tony, would you care us the Lord, please? Amen. You may be seated. You know, I liked how this thing ended up, and it's been well. It's been a great study. I mean, I have really enjoyed the book of John. There have been many things that, even though John is sort of an overview of it all, there's been so much that we've been able to glean from it. And one of the things that, that, that I liked as he wound it up, he, it, he says this. He said, this is the disciple which testifies of these things and wrote these things and we know that his testimony is true. In other words, he said, hey, I'm giving you an eyewitness account. This is not hearsay. This is not something that I heard someone else do. You know, I always rather hear from somebody who's seen it firsthand, who was, who was privy. I don't need second and third hand gener uh, generated uh, 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 conversation. I want it firsthand if I can get it, uh, at least from someone who has been there. And that John is the one that's been writing this. And he s makes the statement, he said, he said, this testimony that I have written is true. He's given a testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and he also is given a testimony in this last chapters of, of the charge that has been given to Peter. Uh, and the charge, as we know, it was given to Peter to feed his lambs and to feed his sheep. Uh, basically what he said, he said to be about his work, to do his work and his, by doing his word. The call that he's placed upon Peter is a call of commitment. It is not unlike the same call that he places upon each one of us. He places a call of commitment on each one of us. We're to be committed to his way, his lifestyle. He's calling from a commitment from each one of us as followers of Christ. And in this final passage of this gospel, it is a, 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 a pointed finger that points to the total commitment of the disciple Peter. Friends, I want you to understand something. There's some people that half-heartedly commit to stuff. Y'all know anybody that does that? Just half-heartedly commits to stuff. They say, oh, I got this. I I'll do that. Don't worry about that. But the truth of the matter is they don't have any idea of what they've just said because they never had any intentions to follow through to start with. But when we look at this passage of Scripture, he is calling for a total commitment, a, a complete, a great commitment from him. And what is he really committing himself to? If one is totally committed to Christ, there's some things that we know. He has to be totally committed to the following of the leadership of someone else. To be totally committed to the work that God has called him to do, to feed the lambs, to feed the sheep, he has to be totally committed to following the leadership of someone else. You know what? We like to be committed, but we want to commit in our own way. But when we commit to Christ, we don't commit to our way. We commit to his. It calls for self-denial. 
Now, without a shadow of a doubt, Peter, as we read this passage of Scripture, we're going to dive more into it. Peter was just like you and I when he was young. He could go where he wanted to, do what he wanted to do, say what he wanted to say, who he wanted to say it to. But all of a sudden, upon the commitment that he makes to Christ, no longer is he able to go where he wants to go, say what he wants to say, and do what he wants to do. Why? Because he's committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's committed as an apostle of Christ to feed the lambs and to feed the sheep. And my friends, I want you to know not only does it, does it call for self-denial, but it calls for undivided attention upon the task that he's been called to. You cannot complete the task that God has called us to being divided in three or four different areas. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like you and I. I, 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 I was noticing this week. I, I like to pride myself, and pride has no place in the Christian walk, and I'll say that. But, but I, I want you to understand, I like to pride myself to be able to do a little bit of anything. But you know what I discovered this week? I have discovered this week that individuals who specialize in a task can do it much better, that task, and much quicker and more efficiently than what I can. I can get it done, but it takes a while, and I may have to redo it two or three different times. But someone who has specialized, someone who has given their undivided attention to a particular thing does it by far better. I know not long ago we was over at Renee's mom's and her air conditioner went out and, 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 and I got to looking at that thing and I got to thinking about what it was going to take me to get that air conditioner put in and I went to going through the steps laying it out and I want you to know I spent almost as much time trying to figure out what I needed to do as the guy that I hired to do it that specialized in it doing the whole project. I spent almost as much time. Friends, I want you to understand, he calls for us to give the task that he has called us to our undivided attention. And, and, and he also, he calls up for us, when we give total commitment to him, to bear witness of him. A lot of times when we're committed to things, we like to uh, bear witness of our involvement. Friends, I want you to know something. When we look at this passage of Scripture, as he's called to feed the lamb, when he's called to feed the sheep, he is called to do it in Christ's name, in Christ's name alone. Total commitment. Let's talk about it for a minute now. That total commitment, as I first stated, it calls for us to follow the leadership of someone else. That leadership for Christians is none other than the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the one who will carry Peter all the way through his life. And we know a lot about Peter's life. We know that Peter's life was full of suffering. We can go back and we can follow his life all the way through Scripture and we'll find that, that he suffered much all the way up to and through martyrdom. For the cause of Christ. You'll find Peter, he was crucified by Nero uh, somewhere around 68 AD. How in the world did he face that cross without denying Christ? My friend, it was because of his, he's totally committed to Christ, but it was also because he had the leadership of the Holy Spirit leading him to that cross. In verse 18, let's look at this passage for just a minute, and let's, let's go through it. Look at what it says. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. In verse 18, as we look at this passage, I would like you to see that he is speaking to Peter of his whole life, from when he was very young even until he was old. In verse 15 and 17, he told him to feed his sheep, to be about his work. That meant he was to tend the, the, the flock of God, the new, the uh, convert, the immature convert, the weak convert, the needy convert. Uh, he's told them to do all that, feed his lambs, feed his sheep, as I've told you. This instruction meant that he was to be totally given to the work. That meant he did not have the ability to choose where he went and do what he wanted to do any longer. You see, it called for him to be a mature Christian. It called for him to grow up, if you will. It called for him to deny himself, as we've said. 
How can you feed both the young and the old, the immature, the needy, and the mature, if you're not mature yourself? I submit to you that you can't. You see, it calls for a total devotion to the cause. There'll be no time for anything else. Think about this in verse number 18. When Peter was young, as I said, he did what he wanted to do. He ran his own life. He did what he wanted. He went where he wanted. He talked to who he wanted. He chose what he pleased to do with his life. But now, as a follower of Christ, he had made Christ Savior and, what's the other word? Lord. That means he gave him sovereign control over his life. When you're totally committing yourself to Christ, you make him Lord over your life, meaning you no longer have control of your own life. He has placed Christ in that position. How can he feed the lambs? How can he feed the sheep? He has to be totally committed to Christ, placing him in lordship over his daily life. Now that he was old, a mature follower, the Holy Spirit would dress him day by day. The Holy Spirit would prepare him for each and every day as he goes. Sometimes it would take him on a journey to places that he would not choose to go. Sometimes he would, he, he would, he would, would not be his will to go, but he would go. Peter would be carried many times down roads that he had no desire to travel. This would, of course, lead to times of suffering and ultimately to martyrdom for which Peter gladly went to the cross under Nero's hand because of the leadership of the Holy Spirit to where he was going. By accepting the call of God, Peter would not be carried where he wanted to go but instead, he would live a life of suffering and imprisonment. And he would die a death, as I said, of a martyr, a death that, uh, for the very cause of the glory of Christ. Let me ask you this question. What is the purpose of our life today? Should our life not be a life that's honored to Christ? Should our life not be a life that brings honor and glory to Christ in every way? Matthew chapter number 8, verses 14, starting in verse 14, talks about Peter having a wife and a mother-in-law. He had a family. Now, I want you to wrap your mind around this. As Peter commits himself, not only does he commit himself, but he also commits his family. You see, a, past, a, 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 a man or a woman has a hard time just committing themselves when there's others that are involved. You see, Peter had a, had a wife, and let me share this with you. Tradition teaches us that his wife shared with him in ministry for many years. As a matter of fact, it is believed that, that Peter probably from the time of, 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 um, of Christ telling him here to feed his lambs and feed his sheep, it is, it is the best estimate, estimated guess that he was in the ministry for over 40 years after that. And being in the ministry for 40 years, William Barclay has written in his Gospel of, the, of Matthew, his, his commentary on the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew quoting, uh, uh, I can't pronounce this name, Stromates, uh, uh, saying, uh, uh, Clement, the Clement of Alexandria said that Peter's wife was martyred with him, and as Peter saw his wife led to death, Peter rejoiced on account of her call and her homegoing. And he called to her as she was being martyred, a very encouraging and comforting adroitly committed to him. Now, I want you to understand something. As we look at this passage again, look back at it if you will. He says, uh, when you're old, that means that when you're mature. See, we associate being older with 
maturity. Or at least that's the way it should have been. There's a lot of older folks, people that act very immature. But my friend, we should be associating old age with maturity. And as he talks to Peter here in verse number 18, he says, when you mature, then someone else will carry you where you go. And that someone else is the Holy Spirit of God. We no longer walk where we will as Peter. We, we no longer dress and walk uh, uh, the way that we want to, but we walk as the Holy Spirit wills. You know, that's one thing that amazes me of how, many, how much things have changed. It amazes me how much things has changed for Christians from where, they, where we once were. You see, that's totally committed to Christ. Uh, 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 there was many of uh, yesterday that talked about modest apparel. It's amazing to me how many today that want to show all everything that God has given them and say that they are walking following the will of God. I have to question that. See, I have to question many other things. I have to uh, uh, question uh, uh, when, when a person is not committed to the Word, when a person's not committed to, the, uh, uh, to prayer, when a person's not committed to that quiet time. I believe I shared with you last week that the average quiet time among believers is seven minutes a day. If you was a hold of the ear of the God of glory, how can you possibly turn him loose in seven minutes? I don't understand. You see, when we look at this passage of Scripture, he says, he says you're no longer your own. Most of the time, the reason we're not committed to that prayer life, the reason we're not committed to reading his word, the reason we're not committed to his work, uh, being about his business is because we've not got him the center uh, of what we've got going on. Well, Brother Mark, I have to work. I agree. But our work still ought to glorify him in our actions, our words, our deeds. I don't care if you run in a machine at Southwire or grading a road or, or building a house or, or working on a truck. Your life ought to be an example for those that's around you to see just your committed commitment to Christ and you ought to use whatever you have to bring honor and glory to Him. When we look at this passage of Scripture, I want you to understand some things. That Holy Spirit, he tells us in John chapter 14, verse 15 through 26, Jesus told them that this Comforter, this Holy Spirit that was going to guide them when he came, uh, uh, the world wouldn't receive, uh, that, that he, uh, uh, my friend, he would teach them his commandments, he would, he, he, would, he would teach them how to love, he would teach them all things, he would bring all things to the remembrance. He would bring the peace. Uh, 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 all this would come to them by following this one called the Holy Ghost of God. Friend, my friends, I want you to know this Holy Spirit, he would reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment, and he would guide them into all truth, and he would glorify Christ. And we are to follow him. We're no longer to dress and walk the way we want to walk. We're no longer to follow our own road. We're to follow His. His command is to be our marching orders, His direction, not our direction, His purpose, not our purpose. We can be sure along this journey that we will encounter persecution. But it's no reason to deter on the road. The world persecutes a person who tries to live godly. We're persecuted at work. We're persecuted at home. Wherever and whenever it pleases the world, they persecute us as believers. We are persecuted by ridicule, by shun, by, 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 by being ignored, by attacks, curses, abuses. We're mocked. We're ignored. We're bypassed for, 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 for promotion. And we're made a reproach in the eyes of the world by being ridiculed. All this persecution. 
And my friend, there's no reason to deter from the path as the Holy Spirit will lead us through that persecution. You and I are called to the same life that Peter was. As Peter went and Peter suffered all the persecution that he suffered, unbelief. Instead, my friend, if I'm going to die, I want to die for Christ. I want to die living a godly life, bearing a testimony on my lips, witnessing that, that I have been helping others, ministering to them along the way, and meeting the needs of those that are in this world. Why? Because I want to be following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But guys, I want you to understand this. It's up to us. Each one of us gets to choose. We choose whether or not we commit ourselves the way that Peter was called to commit. Scripture says that, 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 that in Luke 9, 23, if any man will come after me, let him take up his, uh, his cross daily. So we have to choose. Will we die to ourselves in order to follow Christ? Will we totally commit? If we do, it requires our undivided attention. Jesus rebuked Peter when he looked at John. He rebuked him. He said, it said this, he said, uh, if, if, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? We have a tendency to look around and gauge ourselves based upon other people, but we shouldn't gauge ourselves based upon other people. We must gauge ourselves against the Word of God, and we must commit ourselves to the Word of God, not to the work of other people. When we look at this passage of Scripture, my friend, I want you to know that, 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 that you and I cannot be distracted from what God has for us. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. They were told, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. How in the world can we just sit idly by and let it be all about us when he's asked for us to commit to him? That means we minister to them. If we look at it down in, back in John chapter 21, verse number 23, I want you to see this and I'll close. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Many people out there hear rumors about how things ought to be. It amazes me many times how many people says to me, says, well, Brother Mark, uh, 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 I believe we ought to do this, or I believe we ought to do that, or, or the preacher said this, or the preacher said that, and, and that's nowhere in Scripture. But they followed their own idea of what God thinks about this or what God thinks about that. Do you know that our God is very explicit in what he wants out of us? That's why they're called commands. We've been teaching on Wednesday night. Miss Rita's wrote a fabulous lesson that we've been doing on the Bible. And as she wrote it, one of the things that the, the, the girls in, our, in my class have bought into is the Bible basic instructions before leaving earth. They like that idea. Isn't that true? Isn't that what Christ wants for us to follow the instructions that he's laid out? When we look at the fact of, 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 of the fact that the Lord has called Peter to feed his lambs and feed his sheep, the calling that he placed on Peter's life is the same calling he's placed on every mature 
believer's life. That we are to feed his lambs. Those that are weak, those new converts, those that are, are misguided, those that are those that are, are are out there that needs a little more special attention than others. And we're supposed to feed the mature. But we, we can't do that job. Hear me now. We can't do that job unless we truly commit wholeheartedly to him. There's no way to do it. You can't be on more than one task at a time. You can't feed the ways of the world and live in the ways of the world and do the things of God. So my closing statement is this. To truly be the kind of follower of Christ that he calls us to be calls for total dependency upon him dying to ourself staying undivided in our task staying faithful to his work and his word otherwise we're following our agenda not his I read the back of the book he's keeping records and one of these days regardless of what you think that record book will be opened and we will give an account for the deeds done in this life as a follower of Jesus Christ you know we get out of the white throne judgment because we pleaded the blood of Jesus Christ we trust our trust in the work that he did on Calvary's cross but we don't get out of the beam of seat judgment of Christ quite so easily because as a believer we'll stand before him and give an account to give an account are you ready to give that account have you died to yourself have you made him the center of everything that you are if not today is the day Heavenly Father as best as I know how I've delivered the message you gave me this morning and God I pray that you'd help each one of us to be more wholly committed to you help us God to be more faithful in our service help us God to deny our own selves help us God to die to our own pride and our own prejudice help us God to be fully surrendered to your work I love you today in Jesus name Amen. Thoughts and comments before we dismiss. I'm going to leave that just like that. The invitations for everybody in your own heart this morning. Anybody, anything. Thank you all for being here. Brother Vic Hawkins, would you dismiss us, please?